education was historically considered a great equalizer in American society, capable of lifting less advantaged children and improving their chances for success as adults. But a body of recently published scholarship suggests that the achievement gap between rich and poor children is widening, a development that threatens to dilute education's leveling effects. In today's video we will talk about rich students versus poor students. It is a well-known fact that children from affluent families tend to do better in school. Yet the income divide has received far less attention from policymakers and government officials than gaps in student accomplishment by race. Now, in analyses of long-term data published in recent months, researchers are finding that the gap between rich and poor students has grown substantially during the same period. With income declines more severe in the lower brackets, there's a good chance the recession may have widened the gap, Professor Reardon said. In the study he led, researchers analyzed 12 sets of standardized test scores starting in 1960 and ending in 2007. He compared children from families in the 90th percentile of income, the equivalent of around $160,000 in 2008, when the study was conducted, and children from the 10th percentile, $17,500 in 2008. By the end of that period, the achievement gap by income had grown by 40%, he said. The connection between income inequality among parents and the social mobility of their children has been a focus of President Obama as well as some of the Republican presidential candidates. One reason for the growing gap in achievement, researchers say, could be that wealthy parents invest more time and money than ever before in their children, while lower-income families, which are now more likely than ever to be headed by a single parent, are increasingly stretched for time and resources. This has been particularly true as more parents try to position their children for college, which has become ever more essential for success in today's economy. A study by Sabino Cornrich found that in 1972, Americans at the upper end of the income spectrum were spending five times as much per child as low-income families. By 2007 that gap had grown to 9 to 1, spending by upper-income families more than doubled, while spending by low-income families grew by 20%. The gap is also growing in college. The University of Michigan study, by Susan M. Donarski and Martha J. Abailey, looked at two generations of students, those born from 1961 to 1964 and those born from 1979 to 1982. By 1989, about one-third of the high-income students in the first generation had finished college, by 2007, more than half of the second generation had done so. By contrast, only 9% of the low-income students in the second generation had completed college by 2007, up only slightly from a 5% college completion rate by the first generation in 1989. The growing gap between the better educated and the less educated, he argued, has formed a kind of cultural divide that has its roots in natural social forces, like the tendency of educated people to marry other educated people, as well as in the social policies of the 1960s, like welfare and other government programs, which he contended provided incentives for staying single. When the economy recovers, you'll still see all these problems persisting for reasons that have nothing to do with money and everything to do with culture. There are no easy answers, in part because the problem is so complex. Blaming the problem on the richest of the rich ignores an equally important driver, to earn her household wealth, which has lifted the upper middle class ever further from less educated Americans, who tend to be single parents.